Let's calibrate external display link up to a Mac with Calibrite Profiler. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. This Calibrite Profiler guide will work for most external displays link up to your Mac. Whether you have a laptop or a desktop running on Intel or Apple Silicon, it will function in the exact same way. But this in mind, there are some exceptions. For instance, if you have an Apple external display pre-2018, the method of going through to profile those displays are slightly different than what I am about to show you, and I have a link to that particular walkthrough in the description. Or if you have the Apple 27-inch 5K Studio Display or the Pro Display XDR, the method of going into profile and calibrate those displays are totally different than what I'm about to show you because those display have what Apple call reference mode or preset and that guide and walkthrough will be in the description as well and I highly recommend that you watch those instead if you have these two displays. With this in mind, we have to remember that not all the displays are equal so even though we can go in and profile the display, we may not get the result that we are expecting or the most accurate result possible. If you have a more premium creative panel, you're going to get a much better result than I would say a more entry general displays that you have on the market. The other thing to remember is that when it comes to hardware calibration capable displays such as BenQ SW hardware calibrated display for photographers, even though the method I'm about to show you can be used for that, you're better off using the software that comes from the display manufacturer. In the case of BenQ, that is Palette Master Ultimate or Palette Master Element because those software are going to talk directly to the 3D lookup table inside the display where what I'm about to show you is really just creating a profile or doing what we call a software calibration. Now let's talk about the compatible calibration devices that you can use. For this, you can use any Calibrite or X-Rite devices that is compatible with Calibrite Profiler. Now, what I'm about to show you in this guide, I'll be using a pro-level device, so that will give me more control over the ICC profiling parameters that I can set in the program. However, if you have one of their more entry model device, it will also work similarly as well, and you can also follow through on this guide. With this in mind, we are working with OS and operating systems, so there are settings that we need to change or turn off in order for us to get the best calibration result possible. I'll leave a link in the description to the various macOS version because there are some slight changes to the interface. This way you can follow through on those guides, turn off all those settings, and come back and continue on with this walkthrough. If you have multiple displays link up to a system, they must be extended mode and not in mirror mode in order for you to get the best result possible and a successful profiling and calibration. The display that you are going to profile, you want to leave it on and running for at least 15 to 30 minutes before you start the process. This way the LED backlight or the backlight in general has the opportunity to properly warm up and stabilize so you can get the best and most consistent result possible. Lastly, there's one setting when it comes to pro devices from Calibrite and Xrite that you can change in the program that is backlight type. So if you're unsure what backlight type you have, white LED is always a safe option. The other thing that you can do is always contact the display manufacturer and find out what backlight type or backlight technology they use in their display. What I can tell you is that if you have a BenQ SW or PD line display, you would choose RGB LED from the list in the program. And let's quickly talk about my setup. For this, I have my 14-inch MacBook Pro M2 Max linked to my display via USB Type-C. This is BenQ PD2706UA. This is a 27-inch 4K Pro Design display that is on the Ergo arm. The calibration device that I'll be using is the Calibrite Display Plus HL. And before we start out anything, what I want to do first is show you system settings. So I'm running on the latest Ventura. As of this filming, this is version 13.5. And what I'm going to do now is go into display. So there are a few things that we need to double check in our display setting. For instance, if you have multiple display link of the system like I have right now, one way to check if you have your display in mirroring or in extended is to click on the range. And if you see, for instance, two display side by side like so, this is in extended mode. If you see them on top of each other, stack on top, that means you're in mirrored mode and you need to get out of that. If you want to get out of mirror mode or verify, another way to do it is to pretty much click on the display that you want to verify. And right now, for instance, you can see that my built-in display is set to extend this external display that I have. And that's exactly what you want to do. If it's on mirror, it is not going to work. 
I can verify this by clicking on the Ben key as well. And you can see that it is set as the main display, but it is not set to mirror the built-in display. So as long as they're not mirroring each other, this is going to work just fine. Another thing that I want to point out by clicking on the built-in display when you're running on a Mac is that any Mac that has a built-in display or an external display on a Mac that has a built-in camera will have function, for instance, automatically adjust brightness and true tone. You want to make sure those are turned off and that's part of the guide that is in the description. If you have watched this guide and follow through already, that setting should have already been turned off and particularly true tone because true tone will not only affect built-in displays, or Apple external display, but it will also affect any other display that's linked up to the system as well. And if you are in a room where window lights coming in and color temperature is constantly changing, well, your display will constantly change with the color, the ambient light in a room. And that's definitely something you don't want. For now, I am done with this system settings. And by the way, you, there is no profile that you have to come in and set before you start this process because the program will automatically apply a linear profile. So that's why I'm not really going to even do anything. I'm just going to leave it at the default for now. Now, when it comes to these external displays, before you start the profiling process, it is a good idea for us to come in and choose the color gamut that we want to work in. The nice thing about BenQ is that Getting the Pro display from BenQ, whether it is SW or PD, I can know that BenQ have gone in and calibrate these and all the different Pro color gamuts that I can choose from. For instance, I'll go into the color menu and color mode, and you can see that I have the option to choose, for example, sRGB. This is going to be more for photography. If you want to use Display P3, this is going to be a hybrid between photo and video. It is one of those generic large color gamut that you can use. But if you want to do, for example, Digital Cinema P3, you can certainly choose DCI P3 as well, or even Rec 709 if you want to work in a video specific color gamut, you can certainly do that. For this particular guide, I will choose Display P3, and what I'm gonna do is go back on auto settings. So I have Display P3 selected. I am going to launch Calibrite Profiler. I have Calibrite Profiler launched and it has already seen my Display Plus HL. You can see that it's active. I'll go to Profile My Monitor, choose Advanced Mode, click on Next. For this display, I know from BenQ that this is going to be RGB LED. That is the one that they recommend. If you're not sure what display backlight technology you have, white LED is always a safe option. Or the other thing that you can do as well is to contact the display manufacturer and find out what backlight technology they are using. I want to share with us one more thing is under mini LED, do you note that only the Display Pro HL and Display Plus HL would give you the option to choose the mini LED backlight. For now, I'm going to choose RGB LED. And what I'm going to do is start out with the photo. And at the very top here, I'm going to start with the workflow. I'll click on the D65. So we can set the white point for our display profiling. We can certainly choose D50 if we want to for any type of pre-press work. For now, I'm gonna choose D65, but you also have the option to go in and choose custom. And in custom, you can choose a different temperature. You can even dial in the temperature or measure the temperature as well. There are so many things you can do in custom. For now, we'll choose D65. For luminance, I'm gonna choose custom and I'm going to choose 80 nits. The luminance range for both photo and video, especially photographers who print, my recommended range is anywhere between 80 to 120 nits. And if you want to experiment a little bit with the different nit value, you can certainly do that. But the recommendation is to do it by the increments of 10. So going from 80 to 90, 90 to 100, so on and so forth. For me, based on my testing, I found out that 80 works really well for me. It's going to dim the display down by quite a bit. So if your environment is a little bit brighter, you can certainly choose to use a higher nit value as well. However, I don't recommend going beyond the 120 because a lot of time what photographers are going to run into is everything looks great on the display. The print is coming back from the lab or coming out from the printer really dark. And a lot of that really comes from this luminance value that was not set properly during the profiling process. From a drop-down list, you can choose many options, native, custom luminous, you can even measure. For now, we'll click on next. And for this, when it comes to contrast option, I'm gonna choose native. However, there are different custom options I can dial in as well. I can choose the different black point value. I'm not going to do that. As far as gamma go, I'll leave this a 2.2 for photo. However, you can click on custom and if you're doing video, I recommend choosing custom and 
This is also especially important if you're using, for example, Rec 709 and you want to work in something that's more video gamma, you can type in 2.4. We're gonna cancel this out so you can choose to use in 2.4. You can choose sRGB or BT1886. Now, there are only three devices that will give you access to BT1886 with Calibrite Profiler. That will be the i1 Display Plus that has been upgraded, the license, to work with Calibrite Profiler. Calibrite Display Plus and also Display Plus HL or Color Checker Display Plus and Display Plus HL, which is the device I'm using. With these three devices, you would have access to BT1886. For now, we'll choose 2.2. I'll click on next and for this advanced profiling option, we're going to leave everything at default. Click on next again. This is where we will choose a number of patches we want to measure. For now, for the time, I'm going to choose 118, but when you're doing this on your own, I highly recommend choosing at least 211 or 461. Notice with these two options, you can also add in your images as well. When you do this, the program is going to generate a few extra patches from your image and add that as part of the measuring process. But for now, we we'll choose 118, I'll click on next. And we can see that the device is connected. However, the preset is showing yellow. This means that I can save this out. For example, I'll save this one as BenQ PD2706UA. Save that. And next time, what I can really do is come in and follow through this exact workflow without having to dial in all those value again. You can see that this is also showing in green as well. I'll click on start measurement. And what I'm going to do is adjust the brightness on the display. I'll click on continue. And for the device, any Calibrite device that you may have that is a colorimeter, you would simply, to set this up, just pull the cap off a little bit and rotate it to the back like so. In the very front, there is a felt lining that prevents any stray light from coming in. So you can do profiling in a bright environment like this. And there is a counterweight. Simply just press on that little button and you can really just pull the wire back and forth without having to add that much force at all. So if you have to use force on this part, it's not you know, pr depressed properly. What I'm gonna do now is hang the device from the display. Notice how if I don't tilt the display back, the device is not laying flat. This is part of the reason why we tilt our display back, verify that the device is flat. It's now showing green. I will click on next. This is now going to measure the brightness of the display and give me the opportunity to set the brightness. And now it's reading 215 at the max. So what I'm gonna do is go into menu, color, and brightness. You can certainly use a shortcut as well, but because I'm using a hockey puck, I'm gonna go through the full menu. And for this, I'm gonna start out at around 40, and let's see where this takes us. So 40 is still 99, is too high. I'm gonna bring this down to 32, let's try just 30. All right, so 30 ends me at 79, which is really close. If you're getting the values that are close but not exact, you're gonna be okay. If they're within plus minus five with a value that you want, sometimes you just have to go with it because certain displays, they may not be able to scale down to exact value that you want. With this in mind, I'll click on next and it's going to start the measurement process. I'll leave this running and then we'll come back to do a display validation or a profile validation. And we'll talk about a few other neat things with Calibrite Profile that makes your life easy when dealing with profiles. And the measurement process is finished. I'll just slide the device to the side. I'm not gonna close it yet. Click on next. These are the colors that it measures. And for this, I am going to name this profile. You can put the date in there too. I highly recommend that. This way you know the date that this profile was created. I'll also type in the color gamut or the color mode that I use as well. So for this one, I use display P3. So I'm gonna put down the P3. So I know that this corresponds to the color mode. So one thing that you can do when you're really profiling these display, because there are many color modes you can choose from, if you want to work in multiple different color modes, you can go in and choose a color mode, profile the display, type the name in a color mode. This way, when you switch to different color modes, you want to verify that you're looking at those colors with extreme accuracy. You can just change the corresponding system profile to that particular color mode that you have. And the profile reminder, I have mine set to none. Um, the, by default, you'll see this showing up as four weeks. You can create a username with email address and it's going to send you a reminder. 
For me, what I'm gonna do is set this to none because I do so many profiling anyway, but the recommendation is to go in and reprofile your display around every four weeks or so to keep the result as consistent as possible. I'll click on save. And once it's saved out, I can do the before and after on different pictures. What I'm gonna do is really just go in to validate these, the profile. And with this option, I have in Calibrite Profile, the option to choose from Color Checker Classic 24 or 96. For time, I'm gonna use 24. Personally, when I do this on my own, I tend to use 96. I'll move that over to circle. I'll click on next and you have to click on start measurement this time. If you don't, you will be staring at that white circle. This is going to measure 24 patches and then we'll see how the result is at the end. All right, here's it's finished. I'm gonna click on next and we'll close the device down. So for this, I am able to achieve an average for all the patches at 0.6 with the max for one patch being at 1.8. I can certainly choose to save this result out. For example, I can save this to like the desktop and I'll just type in, there you go. So you can save that out. And in general, when you can profile display and get the total Delta E below two, I mean, that's considered to be a really great value and really accurate colors because human vision can't discern anything that's really below two. So we're really now getting a good profile out of this display. Once I'm done with this, I'll click on finish. And I want to show us one thing is that normally we go into system settings to work with our dis display profile. So it can type on display. I can highlight BenQ PD2706UA. You can see that the DP3 is selected right there. And I can certainly choose to change the other profile from this list as well. Now, one thing that you can do instead is to use Calibrite Profiler to manage your profile. So in the utility section of this program, there is the profile manager. If you click on that, you can see all the profiles that you have for this particular display and any other profiles as well, you can see below. And when you highlight the profile, it will also show you all the different parameters for this particular profile. You can certainly choose to activate it, or if you wanna clean things up, you can delete this profile. So there's a lot of options there. I wanna go home and point us to one more thing. And that is, for instance, when I want to just start out the process again, when I, I am at this screen, I can choose advanced, I can click on next, and simply enough, next time that I come in, rather than going through all those settings again, because we have saved the preset out, I can come in to save preset and choose from a drop down list. You can see my BenQ PD2706UA selected. Once I select that, all the parameters that I've dialed in earlier from the profiling before is already loaded in. I can just simply click on next and start the profiling process right away without having to go through all the settings again. So that's something that you may want to consider when you are using this program is saving those presets out, which is going to save you a lot of time in the future. And that's pretty much it for Calibrite Profiler with external displays linked up to a Mac. I hope that you find this information helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit the bell renew and in our retrust.